since uh, February 1st has been proclaimed as World Hijab Day. And I mean, for me, when I hear World Hijab Day, after I laugh for half an hour, it, it does make me angry because for me, uh, celebrating uh, the hijab is like celebrating female genital mutilation. It's like celebrating uh, the ironing of breasts, for example, in some countries in Africa. It is like celebrating, um, you know, foot binding. Uh, all of these things which are harmful practices against women and which are used to manage and control women's sexualities, their bodies and their rights. So, uh, you know, the celebration of a harmful practice is scandalous, really. And the fact that so many people think that it is on par uh, to celebrating International Women's Day, International Labor Day, uh, you know, International Day uh, of Human Rights. It's it's completely the antithesis of, of those days. Um, and I know some people will say, well, how can you compare a piece of cloth to uh, mutilation of a woman's genitalia, for example, or the ironing of breasts? But we have to understand that as a harmful practice, the hijab has both physical repercussions, the fact that women don't, and girls from very young age, don't get sunlight on their bodies, have vitamin D deficiencies, can get diseases such as rickets, but also the psychological toll that it takes on uh, uh, girls from a very, very young age. And also the fact that it, it represents you know, the, the fact that women and girls must be segregated from society, they're seen to be a source of chaos, fitna, uh, and that society actually has to be protected uh, from women and girls, which is why they need to wear uh, the veil. And if you compare it with racial apartheid in South Africa, it's uh, in addition to the sort of segregation that black people faced in South Africa or in during the, uh, you know, before the civil rights movement in the US was able to make gains. It is as if women are segregated based on their gender and they actually have to carry their wall of separation on their hair and on their bodies. And, you know, we often, when we, when we discuss this issue, people keep telling us about choice. And of course, there are some people who choose to wear the hijab, even if they choose it completely freely and without any pressure, it is still a harmful practice in the same way that some women might choose to remain in a forced marriage or in a violent situation. Choice is a poor use of uh, word, wording when it comes to something that is in fact a religious imposition and it is an imposition by uh, religious men and by uh, the clergy and of course in situations like in Iran by the state and enforced by violence in many instances. And the other thing is too, when we're talking about the hijab, why do women have to wear the hijab in the first place? I think it's important to look at why uh, women have to be veiled in the same way that you have to ask, why do they need to be mutilated? Why do they need to have their feet bound, for example? And again, it comes down to managing and controlling women and not protecting women, as is often the case, but actually protecting religion and those in power uh, to continue their imposition against uh, uh, women's uh, freedom and women's bodily free freedom. And very often, you know, when we look at this whole modesty culture, very clearly we can see that it is an extension of rape culture because what it says is that if you are not veiled, you are responsible for your rape, for your sexual assault, for your abuse. And, and therefore it is clearly a continuation and extension of rape culture. And I think people need to begin to address the veil for what it is, a harmful practice that puts the onus on women for any violence uh, that they face. And I think when the word choice is used, it's deceptive, it's extremely deceptive. And that's the nicest thing I can say about it. Because whilst there are some women who might choose to wear the veil on a mass scale, on a global scale, on a scale of billions, you know, the, the reality is that religions in positions are not choices and they are in positions, they're not choices. And, you know, I think um, you cannot 
uh, have a discussion on the veil without recognizing that for a vast majority of people, it is an imposition, it is not a choice. And if you remove all the threats and violence and intimidation that comes with its imposition, you can see truly then how many women really choose to wear it. And it cannot be a choice if you are not free to not wear it and if you are not free to remove it. The issue of choice is a bogus one. It's not a real one. Um, and of course, in many places like in Iran, it's compulsory, but that includes in many uh, uh, com so-called communities here in the West as well. There is that pressure and intimidation and violence that uh, prevents people from actually, women from actually, um, you know, having a real choice. And I think, again, this idea of using rights language for something that is a human rights violation is part of the Islamist and fundamentalist project to normalize their rules and restrictions on women by giving it the impression that it is a, a rights issue, a human rights issue. And we are seeing now uh, during this uh, horrible pandem pandemic, uh, which has taken the lives of millions of people across the world. We see those who are defending the hijab equating uh, the niqab and the hijab with compulsory face masks. And of course, these there are no moral equivalencies here. These are false equivalencies. A face mask protects people against dying in a pandemic. Uh, a niqab and the veil are there to protect religion and a patriarchs and to prevent women from living the life that they, they, they have a right to do and they have a right to choose. Um, I do also want to just uh, finish uh, by saying that, uh, yes, of course, uh, you know, we don't want women's hijabs to be removed forcibly, uh, you know, and even though the idea of choice is questionable, adult women have a right you know, to wear the hijab if they want to, but we also cannot uh, ignore the realities that the hijab is sexist, it is misogynist, and that we have to be able to combat the ideas that put women in positions that they are, they have no choice really but to wear the veil. This year, a World Hijab Day activists are um, calling for people to, one, wear the hijab, in solidarity with women who wear the hijab. Again, for me, it's like telling people to mutilate themselves in order to show solidarity with uh, victims of FGM. I think, again, uh, a false correlation. And the other thing that they're promoting is this concept of hijabophobia. And they are saying that it is racism and bigotry to criticize the hijab. And again, like the term Islamophobia, Islamists and fundamentalists are trying to equate bigotry with people uh, as being one and the same as criticism of an idea like religion, uh, a very bad idea at that, and criticism of the hijab, which is uh, a symbol of misogyny and sexism today. So uh, my call is that, yes, we oppose bigotry of all forms. We oppose racism of all forms. Uh, and at the same time, we will not compromise on a defense of women's rights. And part of that defense is challenging religious misogyny, religious rules, of which the hijab is very fundamental. Thank you.